From an early age, I was always very curious. I made contraptions of wires wrapped around clotheslines, and I used to make a so-called water purification plant out of Dettol and soap water. Every day, my parents dreaded coming home to another big mess. I was only two years old back then. This curiosity took a different form when I was exposed to the internet. I watched many science videos to satisfy my curiosity, and I also read a variety of books on everything from Nobel laureates all the way down to birds. I just couldn't bear not knowing something. This curiosity put me on a path to learning more and more every day. And somewhere along this journey, I realized that our understanding of the universe is incomplete. And furthermore, I realized that, despite all our technological advancement, we might not ever know everything about the universe. Good morning, I'm Timothy, and today I will talk to you about the world of the unknown beneath our understanding of the universe. How much do we know about the universe? It's a lot since we could put man on the moon, rovers on Mars, and launch space probes out of our solar system. We have computers that can rival humans in nearly every technical field, and we have artificial intelligence that can easily pass for a human. However, when you peel back the veneer, you start to realize that fundamentally, we don't know much at all. What do I mean by this? Let's take physics. Physics is the branch of science that helps us understand how the world around us works. And right now, we have two complete yet conflicting understandings of physics. Quantum physics is physics that governs the nature of the smallest particle, the atom and its constituents, such as the fundamental particles of the proton, neutron, electron, and so on. Quantum physics works absolutely perfectly on those really, really small scales. However, if you go up to quantum physics, if we go up to classical physics, it also works perfectly. It determines the motion of a ball thrown up in the air or an apple falling from the sky. These two understandings of physics are working at the same time. However, they conflict. Take the sun, for instance. Quantum physics is active within the sun when the hydrogen nuclei within it fuse to make the sun shine. Classical physics is in action when the sun, through its gravitational force, makes the earth revolve around it. Despite the seeming coexistence of these two phases of physics, we lack a comprehensive understanding or a unified theory of the working of the universe. Now, let us pull ourselves out of the abstract world of physics and into something a little bit more tangible, the human brain. This one kilogram mass within our skulls is actually a network of 86 billion neurons that forms trillions of connections. And in the impulses of these very neurons lies our personhood, our experiences, our memories, everything that makes us who we are. But most importantly, our brains give us this property that we call consciousness. Consciousness is something that is very hard to define. However, it's something that we can all say we know. Consciousness can be loosely defined as the awareness of one's own existence. However, the problem here is that we have no idea how consciousness emerges. Take a clump of cells. They are no more conscious than a plank of wood. However, if you take enough of these cells, put them together in a specific configuration, such as that you see in the human brain, these cells start to become conscious and they start giving TED Talks on consciousness. Here is what eight of the leading neuroscientists have to say about our understanding of consciousness. They say, we have no idea how consciousness emerges from the physical activity of the brain, and we do not know whether consciousness can emerge from non-biological systems such as computers. The brain is the most complicated machine that we are aware of, and at least for now, its understanding completely eludes us. We don't know how the universe works on a fundamental level, and we don't even know how our own brains work. I think it should be obvious by now that our understanding of the world is quite cursory and that there is so much more to learn. The natural extension of this idea is to look to the future and ask, how much more can we learn? Clearly, 
technological advancement lies on exponential scale and every day the pace at which technology advances gets more and more rapid and we keep digging deeper to find out more about consciousness and a unified theory of physics. Now, will there be some point of time at which technology is so sufficiently advanced that we can understand everything about the universe? I'm here to tell you that perhaps not. Maybe no matter how advanced technology gets, there will be some things that we just can't know and explain why we may, we may never plug the hole at the bottom of science, I invite you to the world of math, which is kind of like the foundation on which science stands. Math to us is something like a truth machine, something that is infallible, doesn't produce contradictions, and it's the only tool by which we can ascertain something as absolutely true or false. However, math may also be disconnected from reality. We often deal with numbers that are infinite yet have finite value, or infinite shapes with finite volume. However, in math's disconnectedness lies its greatest strength. Math is obviously a tool in our arsenal when it comes to discovering the truth, and as such, we expect it to be perfect. However, math is incomplete. Legendary Austrian logician Kurt Gödel proved that in our current axiomatic system of math, there are some true statements we just can't prove. Through school, we've been conditioned to prove that everything that is true has a proof. And everything that we can prove is true. However, Gödel proved that there are some true statements we just can't prove. And this has wide-reaching consequences. Take, for instance, the Riemann hypothesis. The Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture, which is simply a statement or theorem that looks to be absolutely true, but one that we have no proof for. The Riemann hypothesis is what quantum computers run on, but no one has ever proven the Riemann hypothesis, and Maybe according to Gödel, we may never prove it. In view of these contradictions, maybe, like math, science will always remain incomplete and there will be some gaps in our understanding that we may never be able to bridge. Now, how do we bridge these gaps of understanding? How do we find the truth that lies between these lines? By daring. Isaac Newton once said, to myself, I'm only a child playing on the beach, while vast oceans of truth lay undiscovered before me. And I think this sentiment is truly the very essence of science. Despite how little we know, we still poke and prod every day to find out more about the universe. And look at how much we've learned. Just in the past century, our understanding of science has advanced so much. Just a hundred years ago, Albert Einstein thought that nuclear fission or the splitting up of an atom to produce energy was impossible. However, just a decade later, Oppenheimer split the atom in the atomic bomb to produce energy. And right now, we have controlled nuclear chain reactions in nuclear power plants that power our homes. Curiosity, the drive to want to know more, is precisely what makes us human. The, take the Neanderthals, for instance. They were an extinct species of archaic human or a hominid. They were very protective. They never went out of their comfort zone, only stayed in one region that they knew was completely safe. They never took risks. They never died. However, they went extinct. The human, in contrast, was quite reckless. We traveled and migrated everywhere, all the way from Africa to Asia. We were quite daring, but we survived. It is precisely our thirst for knowledge that has kept us alive and it is what will carry us into the future. As long as we dare to dive into the unknown and as long as we dare to push the boundaries of what we know, we will keep moving forward harder and faster than ever. Maybe finding the truth at the bottom of everything is impossible, but to dare is what makes us human. Ultimately, it doesn't matter whether we'll find out everything about the universe because the mysteries of the universe give us purpose, something to keep running towards. We build bigger and better radio telescopes and radio observatories to find out more about physics and reach a unified theory of the universe. We have brain scanning technologies and artificial intelligence to unravel the secrets of the brain. From our humble corner of the universe, we have measured the length and the breadth of the universe and we have sieved through it for signs of life. In this vast expanse that is the universe that we call home, 
in which we are nothing but a speck of dust. We have made our mark. To be human is to dare. And to be human is to want to find the truth. So go out and find the truth by daring to ask the big questions. Because in the answers to the most outlandish questions lies the key to unlocking the greatest mysteries of the universe. And in the fire of curiosity, the greatest scientists are forged. Even now, so many scientific discoveries lie shrouded in darkness. So let the light of your inquisitiveness unravel them. Like Einstein and Euler, like Newton and von Neumann, like Feynman and Fermi before us, let us dare to dive into the world of the unknown to find the greatest truths at the bottom of that endless ocean. Thank you.